Hello, I'm Heidi Young from Alimed, and you are viewing video three of the PIR alarm systems featuring system three, motion detection bed alarm and remote receiver. If you have not yet seen our overview, you may want to go back and view that video first to get a general idea of how the system as a whole works, how to use it, and all its benefits and features. But just to quickly review, the PIR is a wireless motion sensing alarm that acts as a first alert to patients who are about to rise from their bed. It uses infrared technology to create an invisible field that triggers an alarm once the sensing field has been disturbed. This presentation takes a closer look at System 3 and explains the benefits specific to the system, its components, setup instructions, and how to use it. System 3 is a variation of our basic PIR system, but upgrades it from a local bedside alarm to an alarm that can transmit signals to the included remote receiver unit. Its most unique feature is its ability to transmit signals from multiple PIR alarm units to a remote receiver up to 100 feet away. This alerts staff in the hall or around the corner with an alarm tone and flashing light. It is a great choice if you're looking for the added safety of an alarm that can sound in more than one location and can deliver a further reaching warning to patients in danger of falling. It can be placed on the side or at the foot of the bed or at the headboard. You can even place it above the doorway for patients who tend to wander out of the room. Like System 1, System 3 bed alarm with remote receiver comes installed with a swivel mounting bracket and includes one 9 volt battery. It also comes with the wireless remote receiver unit. On the front of the alarm is the sensing area. This is the part of the alarm that emits the invisible infrared sensing field. Be sure this is the side facing out when the alarm is in use. On either side is the low battery alert light and the speaker where the local alarm sound is emitted. On one side of the alarm is the alarm settings, which include the on-off switch, the high-low volume slider, and the nurse call jack. On the reverse side is the reset button. The unit swivels in the holster to expose the battery compartment. Here you'll also find the transmission mode controls. Three choices can be made from the transmission mode using the selector switch. Choose alarm if you want only the alarm to sound with no signal sent to the remote receiver. Use this mode when using the PIR alarm alone. Choose transmit when you want the PIR alarm to tr only transmit to the remote receiver and not emit an alarm sound itself. Use this mode when trying to avoid waking the other patients in the room. Choose transmit and alarm if you want the PIR alarm to sound both locally and transmit to the remote receiver, alerting staff outside the room as well as warning the patient that they have triggered the alarm. Just below these controls is the delay function selector. Choose either a 10 or 20 second delay that allows the caregiver to exit the room without disturbing the sensing field. The eight position red and white dip switches indicate the channel the transmitter or receiver is set to. They are numbered one through eight. On the bottom side of the holster are the screw slots for mounting the device. System three also comes with a remote receiver unit which communicates with the alarm unit to extend the range of the sounding alarm by up to 100 feet in any direction. On the front is a series of three alert lights, a low battery indicator for the remote unit itself that illuminates red, a patient unit low battery indicator that illuminates yellow when the PIR alarm unit battery is low, and a green power on indicator. The front also contains the alarm speaker and the accompanying flashing alert light. To the side is the power on off selector. Just below is the high low volume selector and below that is the AC adapter port you may order an AC adapter separately. On the back are screw slots for mounting. There are also slots that expose the magnetic surface, allowing the unit to be mounted magnetically. To expose the battery compartment, remove the screw from the bottom of the unit. There you'll also find the blue and white dip switches that will program to communicate with the remote receiver. To set up the alarm, select a proper mounting location based on the area to be monitored. You will want to position the sensor so that it creates a sensing field nearest where the patient is likely to move first when attempting to rise. Now securely mount the bracket to either wall or bed, making sure the unit is positioned so the power switch faces away from the patient. This reduces patient tampering and allows easy access for the caregiver. A magnetic mount is also available with the purchase of the magnetic bed rail clamp PIR system. Once the sensor is securely positioned, test it to ensure proper function. First, switch the unit on and adjust the volume slider. The alarm then enters the 10 or 20 second delay mode. Wait for the alarm to beep, signifying it is ready, and then pass your hand through the sensing field. The alarm will sound. Now that your sensor unit is set up, tested, and ready to use, set up the remote receiver. 
After installing four C-cell batteries, pair the PIR alarm unit with the remote receiver to establish communication. This is achieved by using the blue dip switch module above the batteries. Set each of the eight white switches to match the positions of the PIR unit. Once you've established communication with the PIR unit, mount the receiver unit to the desired location up to 100 feet away. You can mount the unit using the included bracket and screws or by using double-sided tape. To operate the unit, turn the device on using the on-off selector on the side. Adjust the volume settings as desired. It is now ready for use. The PIR unit's sensor field extends horizontally up to 24 feet from the unit. In order to prevent false alarms caused by the caregiver or other patients, use a privacy curtain to reduce the area the sensing field covers. Ideally, face the alarm at the top of the foot of the bed so the sensor field stops at the wall and does not trigger a false alarm if someone walks past the foot of the bed. You may need a second PIR unit to ensure proper coverage of the sensing field. For example, if a PIR is placed on one side of the bed, you may need another sensor for the other side. With the unit mounted in the specified area and patient in place, turn the device on. Remember, you have either 10 or 20 seconds before the alarm activates in case you need to cross the sensing field. Now, when your patient rises and breaks the beam's path, the alarm will sound immediately both at bedside and at the remote receiver unit. This gives the caregivers ample time, whether nearby or around the corner, to attend to the patient who is now in danger of falling. Be sure to test your system daily to ensure proper function. You've just seen video three of the PIR motion sensor alarm systems featuring system three, motion detection bed alarm and remote receiver. There are three other PIR alarm systems. If you would like to use your PIR alarm unit alone with a nurse call system or as a nurse call remote receiver combination system, please see the separate instructional video for each. I'm Heidi Young for Alimed. Thank you for viewing.